This is an emergency now. This was the image that shocked the world. People were willing to die falling off planes rather than staying in Afghanistan when the Taliban infiltrated Kabul. You may think this is a problem far away from us, but it actually affects us more than we think. In fact, this may snowball into multiple events that can lead to a series of crises for many countries, both politically and economically. Hi, I'm Frankie. Welcome back to my fuck show, Frankie Answers Questions. Today, we will talk about the Taliban, Afghanistan, and money. Before we move on, I have something exciting to share with you. If you would like to learn more about how to invest in the stock market in a systematic and stress-free way, we are organizing a stock investing bootcamp in collaboration with M Equities on the 16th to 19th of September. And there will be a scholarship worth 200 ringgit, plus a chance to win an iPad Air. If you sign up before 9th of September, terms and conditions apply. Check out the link in the description below. We can't wait to see you there. Question 1. Who are the Taliban? To understand the Taliban, you need to know what happened in Afghanistan in the 1980s. Afghan guerrillas called the Mujahideen fought a Soviet occupation for 9 years. They even got money and weapons from the CIA. In 1989, the Soviets pulled out and the next few years were chaotic. By 1992, there was a full-blown civil war with tribal leaders fighting for power. Two years later, a militia group called the Taliban emerged and started getting attention. The goal is simple, to go to Kabul and announce an Islamic government there. By 1996, the Taliban have seized the capital. They declared Afghanistan an Islamic Emirate and started imposing their very own strict interpretation of the Sharia law. Then, Nine eleven happened. Question 2. What happened in Afghanistan? The US entered Afghanistan as part of its war on terror following the 9-11 incident with a goal of defeating Al-Qaeda and the Taliban. The United States military has begun strikes against Al-Qaeda terrorist training camps and military installations of the Taliban regime in Afghanistan. It was meant to be a quick and decisive show of force, but it turned out to be a long and deadly war. The all-in cost for the US was $300 million per day, every day, for 20 years which adds up to a sum of $2 trillion on the war in Afghanistan. Finally, in April 2021, President Biden announced that he was pulling out the US troops out of Afghanistan to end the forever war in the country. It's time to end America's longest war. It's time for American troops to come home. In July, the Americans had abandoned their main air force hub for military operations, leaving the Afghan soldiers behind to run the place. This is the opportunity that the Taliban seized and accelerated their offensive in the country. Within a month, Taliban fighters managed to secure the presidential palace in Kabul once again by mid-August. Taliban fighters inside the presidential palace. Question 3. Where did the Taliban get the funding to fight against the US? A. To fight a war is not cheap, you know. Some of the enemy is the military powerhouse of the world. In the beginning, their finances came from drug trades and the extortion businesses. Since Afghanistan is a country that is rich in natural resources, the Taliban eventually also got their hands into illegal mining as well. According to the UN Security Council, they estimated that the militia group earns between 300 to 1.6 billion dollars a year. Talking about that, as mentioned earlier, the US had been spending 300 million dollars a day in the Afghanistan war. Com Compare that to the Taliban, who were earning $300 million a year. And yet, the US was not able to eliminate their enemy. Actually, the Taliban is quite impressive too. Yeah? Well, this tells us that if you use the right strategy, sometimes you can even beat the big boys. But having said that, I don't agree with their practices and the strategy that they deployed, which made a lot of people suffer. Question 4. Is the Afghanistan economy significant to the world? Remember we talked about the Taliban's income source? They used to depend on drug trades and extortion. But over the past few years, they found a new income source. 
mining illegally that is made up half of their income today. Imagine even with the lowest technology and untrained workers, they were able to unearth such value. Can you imagine how rich is the Afghan soil? The country is sitting on $3 trillion worth of minerals yet to be mined. Consists of fossil fuel, gold, zinc, lithium, even uranium. Well, okay, that's scary. So imagine if the country is being managed well and they can fully commercially exploit their natural resources, they could be $3 trillion richer today. According to reports, mining contributes around 7-10% to of Afghanistan's GDP, even after taking into account illegal mining activities by the Taliban, which I think is a respectable figure. If the Afghan is able to grow this industry, I believe it will be a significant contributor to their economy. Question 5. How does the Taliban affect the world. The immediate problem we can see here is a refugee crisis. These people fear their dreams of a flight out are ebbing away as each day passes. Refugee crisis is actually a very expensive problem. Imagine if there is an influx of refugees into our country. The government will need to allocate resources to provide them accommodation, food and healthcare. Usually this includes building camps, sending doctors, etc. And imagine these people are not paying any taxes since they are not allowed to work here. Some may argue that we should allow refugees to work, but if that happens, it will take away working opportunities for the locals. That will spark another economic issue. Well, the point I want to make here is this. The refugee problem is usually a very complicated crisis. If you be nice, it's bad for the economy. If you don't be nice, it's bad morally. Either way, there's no win to anybody. Coming back to Afghanistan, you have all seen the footage of people fleeing Kabul. They have to go somewhere, right? That's how the Taliban will affect the world. On the eastern border of Afghanistan is Pakistan. Back in June, Pakistan said that it would seal its border with Afghanistan in the event the Taliban took control. This is because Pakistan is already struggling to cope with the estimated 3 million Afghan migrants already residing there. Moreover, Pakistan is also facing an economic issue of heavy public debt of around 90% of its GDP and it is now dependent on a $6 billion IMF program. Managing a new migration surge will put pressure on the Pakistani economy. On the western side of Afghanistan, an anti-migration sentiment is already running high in Turkey as it grapples with economic woes as well, including high unemployment rate. Imagine that there are already roughly around 14 jobless Turkish in every 100 population today. Fearing a new refugee crisis, Turkey has sent soldiers to reinforce its border with Iran in order to stop a potential influx of Afghans fleeing the Taliban insurgency. Question 6. Will this incident affect the world economy. Yes. To understand how Afghanistan will affect the world economy, you have to first understand the balance of power and how economy works globally. In the past, balance of power refers to the balance of military power between nations to ensure world peace. But today, it has gone beyond the military to economic power. As we know today, the two world largest economies are the US and China. The truth is, without them, many of the global trades will not exist today. Imagine a world without Apple or Intel. Many of your favorite tech companies such as Inari or Glutorix will not exist today. So since the US left Afghanistan, China might try its hands next. Who knows, China may even build a good diplomatic relationship with the new Afghanistan government and even help them with development just like what China did in many African countries. In my opinion, since Afghanistan is geographically close to its Belt and Road Initiative projects, China is motivated to keep peace in the surrounding area. Question 6. Eh? No, sorry. Question 7. How does the Taliban insurgency affect Malaysia? International trade plays a very significant role in Malaysia's economy. Manufacturing has a large influence in the country's economy, accounting for over 40% of the GDP. We are also the world's largest Islamic banking and financial center. On the 18th of August 2021, it was reported on the news that past International Affairs and External Relations Committee Chairman Muhammad Khalil Abdul Hadi posted congratulatory posts to the Taliban-led government of Afghanistan 
from an international relations perspective, this little action potentially implies that Malaysia somewhat agrees to the insurgency behavior in Afghanistan. More so when PAS, together with other MPs from BN, PPBM, GPS, and Perikatan Friendly Independence may form the next government after former Prime Minister Muhyiddin Yassin resigned on the 16th of August. While the post has been deleted, news portal had picked it up and the original statement can still be found online at the time of recording of this video. Since then, there have been calls to take actions against PAS or the new government may pay the price for pandering to the Taliban. Already, Malaysia has lost an investment opportunity from Facebook after being left out from the tech giant's latest subsea cable system, dubbed the Apricot Undersea Cable System, spanning 12,000 km that will connect Guam, Japan, Taiwan, the Philippines, Indonesia, and Singapore. The news came as a blow to Malaysia's digital economy ambition due to political uncertainty and the people are now pointing the finger at the former transport minister Dato Sri Wikasyong for removing the cabotage exemption policy which was put in place by his predecessor Anthony Lok. Please don't destroy our Malaysian economy further. That's all we have for today. Hashtag fuck.